Right where we left off? Right where we left off? Right where we left off. So you're going to come out for the first period like you haven't slept in days, flounder your way to a two-goal deficit while blaming your goaltender, even though he's the only one actually trying to keep you in this thing. You're going to get mad at the referees for not giving you any calls, even though you never have the puck to actually draw any penalties in the first place. And we both know even if you did have a power play, you would inevitably do something stupid with it to give us an odd man rush, which we will capitalize on at least once per game. You're going to have a push late in the third to give you some hope of actually beating us, but of course we both know that's the only time of the game that Bobrovsky is actually going to be a world-class elite talent. We're going to survive the push, we're going to win the game, and our fans will talk about how we live rent-free in your head. Well, this one went a little different than that. Did it end differently? No. It's like we never left. Low-quality fans of a high-quality Bruins team! That is not a dub, and I'm pretty... This team, man... This team. You know, when a team has your number, they have your number. That's it. Like, they have your number. There's nothing you can do about it. Doesn't matter if they're missing the two best players. When they have your number, they have your number. Until. Until they don't. You don't know when it'll be. But all of a sudden, they just won't have your number anymore. That's it. They just won't. And... Once that happens, the whole script flips, and you don't know when it's coming. Certainly, you're not worried about two games in October. And if that sounds like me just huffing a whole bunch of copium, you'd be damn right. They are kicking our ass. God damn. Get this team out of here. They are beating our buns off, lads. This is brutal. This is brutal. The Panthers have our number. What are you going to do about it? You're not going to do a damn thing. They're, <laughs> they're a great team. And honestly, I do want to give huge credit to them because as much as I hate this team and the dirty bullshit, and this time it's Greer getting in on it, they play the same style even without their two best players. you got to respect that. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. I'm, I'm a sign, not a cop. But they, they really do play the same style no matter who's in or out of the lineup. you got you got to be impressed. No, I'm not overly frustrated about the current state of the Bruins for some reasons. I don't care about the losses to the Panthers. If you told me like, Hey, the first four games of your season, you're going to lose twice to the defending champs. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. That kind of feels correct to me. We know we're not on the Panthers level right now. That's not like a, a foreign concept to anybody. That's just what it is. That is okay. That's okay for now. That's okay. Cause it's October. We can, we can be okay with this being in October. Uh, no, I'm not upset about it being the Panthers. I'm not upset being 500 after four games. We're 500 after six weeks. As long as we're still in the mix, that's what I care about. Because I think this team's going to get better as the season goes on. God, I hope it does. Not really upset about the defensive woes, exactly. Not upset about Swayman shaking off some rust. Not, not upset about too many of these things. No, what I am upset about, though, and why we're going kind of out of order here, as you might have noticed, because I'm about to start talking about some game notes right now, which, by the way, just for context, no Barkov, no Noshik, no Kachuk for the Panthers. Uh, illness, upper body, and then Barkov luckily has a lower body injury that should only be a few weeks rather than the whole season, because at the moment, a lot of us went, oh, no. So, we never root for injuries. I want, I want that Panthers team to be fully staffed all year. I want to see what they can, what they can do. Um, they did go flaccid between beating us. They, they lost to the Senators and the Sabres, the first one of the season for each of those teams. And the Sabres were on a three-game losing streak already. Classic Sabres. But the Panthers are probably one of a handful of teams that don't care right now. They just can't possibly. It's about getting things right. The result doesn't matter really at all because they know they're good enough to, they're going to go on some streaks. They're going to be in the mix. Like, obviously, you don't want to get in a huge hole here, but they're, they're not thinking about these games day to day the same way that a lot of the, us are, a lot of the same other teams are, and how we have to make the playoffs, and the Panthers are beyond that. There's your context. Not really upset about losing to the Panthers all that much. Hate them, but, you know, that's part of the fun. I'm upset because of Monty. That's what I'm upset at right now. I think this is what I'm most frustrated by. I'm going to give some stats, some quick stats, and we're going to talk about the game. The power play is 2 for 18. Now, I know Monty doesn't run the power Monty's the head coach. I'm going to put this on Monty. He needs to recognize things and change things. 
Four games in. I'm going to put that asterisk right now. I understand it's super early. We're two for 18. We've allowed two shorthanded goals, and one of our power play goals has gone off of a defender's skate at a very lucky angle to score. The power play has been absolute ass. Have there been any personnel changes? Not that I've fucking noticed. What? <laughs> wow. Why? Well, we want to get that power play up to stuff. We want to get to working. Just try some guys skating around. There's going to be injuries through the season. It might not just be personnel, by the way. This power play has been abhorrently poor since the middle of last year. I mean, this is the worst stretch of Bruins power play hockey I've seen since pre-Bergeron days. It's got to be, right? It's got to be. No. Mm, 2011. I don't even think 2011 was this bad, though. I really don't. This is so bad. The power play is embarrassing. Can't take the zone. When they do, they give it away. And the puck movement idea is there. You see it every time, especially with the top unit. You see them starting to grasp onto something, then they flub it. It's just been an absolute joke. So I'm frustrated by the just lack of, of change in that. Two for 18. That's embarrassing. We've had 18 power plays through four games, and we lost two of them. I mean, that's not great. Bigger concern is the lines. I want to give Monty a lot of credit because Kostelik, Beecher, and Kepke had another three-goal performance. Kostelik had three assists, and we lost. Your fourth line scored three goals, and you lost the game. Does anyone want to blame the refs? Really? You do? Your fourth line scored three goals, you had five power plays, and you lost the game. You want to, The refs sucked, sure. That game doesn't come down to the refs. Should they have called the, the, the boarding or checking from behind, whatever you wanted to call, the Greer full numbers on pasta? Absolutely. Was, did I actually, I actually sat back after pasta decided to go right through Reinhardt, which, who, that was not, a, it was a, Penalty, for sure. That was interference. But Reinhardt just... Doof. Ugh. That team, man. That team. No. Blatant penalty. Blatant cross-checking. McAvoy cross-checking for Hagee into the ice. They got so frustrated by the same old thing from Florida. And I actually sat back and went, fine. Just do it. It's October. Get it out of your system. Don't hurt anybody. But, like, hurt the guy. Don't hurt the guy. But hurt the guy. You know what I mean. Like, bring it. Fine. Like, the rest aren't going to police the bullshit. Go at them. It's October. Who cares? Fine. But I can't blame the rest. I can't blame the rest for this game. Your fourth line scored three goals. You lost the game. Your fourth line, before this game started, and I'm sure it only got better, uh, ranks fourth on moneypuck.com for expected goals for percentage out of 113 lines. They're fourth. 113 different line combinations have had at least 10 minutes of even strength ice time. Of five on five ice time, I should say. They rank fourth in their expected goals for percentage, which is 80%. That's absurd. Is that sustainable? I'm going to say yes, even though I know that's not true. Your first line ranks 92nd in expected goals for percentage at five on five hockey. Just wanted that to settle. Your second line ranks 89th. And I bet both of those got worse. <laughs> Why is Morgan Geeky still in the top six? I, there's no amount of, like, we want chemistry to build there. Who's new on that line? Marshand, Coyle, Geeky. Have we seen that before? Yeah. Yeah, we have. And it sucks, dude. It sucks. It's trash. It's a trash-ass line. Marchand has two assists on the season. Neither one of them are with that line. One is a 4v4 assist to Lindholm. Good work, Lindholm. And one of them was a power play assist. Marchand has zero points at 5-on-5. Five five. So does Coyle and, and Geeky, by the way. And Coyle and Geeky are combined minus 5 and plus minus. That's one of your top six lines. Not top, you know what I mean. It's one of your top six. It's not great. 
It's not great. The top line, I know Lindholm has five points in four games. I know Pasternak has three goals in four games. The top line's been shit. It's been awful. Now that line, at least you get to go, well, they're trying to build chemistry and everything, and they're so bad right now. They're so bad. They are getting soundly beaten by any line they go against at five on five. But at least you can go, they got to figure it out. Lindholm's got to figure out how to win a face-off again, and then we can get the rest moving. Fine. You give that a stretch of games. Whatever. The second line, get geeky out of the top six, man. Who are you holding the spot for? Patra has looked awesome. I know he had the big mistake in this one on the power play that led to the shorthanded goal. I'm not asking for my players to be perfect. But Patra's been a hell of a lot better than any other forward on the ice, period. He is creating, and he's creating for Brazil. How many times did Patra get the puck on Brazil's stick in the slot in this game? Because I think it was at least three, and Brazil hit the net once, I think. That's not great. Can you imagine if Patra was skating through, took a defender with him, and then dished it off for Martian on the right side of the slot? I just, maybe swap Coil and, and Patra if you want him at center. Or if you want to put him at right wing, which again, I don't love. I would love Patra to continue to develop as a center. But God, just get top six talent in the top six. Put Patra up there. Or put Trent Frederick in instead of Geeky. At least a guy that I'm like, okay, I know you have a good chemistry with someone up there. And I don't care what Marshan says. I know he's our captain. I don't care. I think Geeky brings a great game. Well, you know what? If Geeky could do that on the ice, tits up, dude. Keep him on the line. But if Geeky continues to play the way he has been and is an active detriment to you, maybe stop telling people you like playing with the guy. You don't have to say you don't like it. Just shut up. So much overreaction. So silly of me. It's not about this game in particular. It's not about any individual game. But there are things that we just continue to trot out that just blow my mind. It doesn't make sense to me. Your second line through four games has zero points at five on five. Zero through four games. That's not a line that I would consider working. And it's not one that's building chemistry because they've all played together extensively. Stop it. Get help. Bring Lysel up. I don't give a fuck. Do something other than Morgan Geeky in the top six. Morgan Geeky is going to thrive in a bottom six role because Morgan Geeky's a damn good utility player. He is not a top six winger. And we all know that. There it is. Ah, oh, I finally figured it out. Do you guys know that I just use you as a therapist sometimes and just talk at you till I can get to where I need to go? I'm mad. I'm mad because Morgan Geeky is in the top six. That's the whole reason I'm mad. That's all of it. Because we all know it's a bad idea, but we keep doing it. Everyone knows. And we keep doing it. That's why I'm mad. I'm also mad that Carlo looks like crap defensively. Uh, he's going to shake out of it. He's going to come back to form. And he had a sniper Rooney and cheats today that we love to see. But I saw that and went, I would trade that goal for you just returning to form in the defensive zone. 100% I would. This guy is our best shutdown defender for years. And he has been an absolute liability. We need him back. We really do. Because on that right side, I don't want Peak playing top four minutes. Carlo's more than capable of doing it. We just need him to get back into shape. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. I'm not worried about the penalty kill. I'm really not worried about all that much. I think this team has a hugely high ceiling. The more I watch it, the more I see things that make me go, there's more here. There's another level, a real another level. It's going to take time and a little bit of a hot streak to hit it. 
Morai is going to have to get a lot more comfortable. Carlo's going to have to come back. Zadorov's going to have to work his way with better chemistry with everybody in the lineup. And he's four games in a row with a penalty now. That's got to get cleaned up. It won't be because I told you before the season started, that's who Zadorov is. Lindholm's got to build chemistry with Pasternak. It has to be just way better in the dot. Other than that, fourth line, been awesome. Third line, when it has Morgan Geeky on it, is going to look damn good. And I don't think, I don't I don't know if Brazil is going to finish the season there. He might bounce around. There's a lot of moving pieces. But I think the final version of our middle six is going to have different players in it and be damn good. There's, it's there. The talent is there. Do we have high-end forwards, one of the best groups of top nine in the league? No. But we have enough that can work through the defense, which has been so active and aggressive offensively. And I like it. It just can't all come from them. So if we have a, a core of supplemental pieces up there that take these really great defenders and work off of them well and work off fast breaks because Jeremy Swayman made the big save, like there's a lot there to like. I don't know why we're doing this geeky thing, man. I don't know why we're doing stuff that's so clearly not working and not good. And we just insist on it. Insist on it. That's what's got me so frustrated. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. I'm 16 minutes into this. Haven't even talked about the game. We're going to go pretty quick through this because there's really actually... Well, we'll go. So, the Bruins playing a very shorthanded Panthers team. The lineups remain exactly the same as last game, game and Jeremy Swayman's going to play his third game in a row. Swayman had his highs and lows. Let's just call it that. 4.53 in. Kepke, along the back wall of the Panthers' zone, bullies a defender into coffee the puck up. He pushes this to Kastlik, who feeds Lori at the left point. Lori is going to feed it back to Kastlik. As he does that same move, comes up to the top of the circle, collects the puck, and just rips this far high side. And this one time, it took a couple of deflections. Actually ended up being Beecher's goal, I believe. Goes off of him. It's 1-0 early. Mm, I don't know if we were all suddenly super confident. But the fourth line, just awesome. 531 in Zaka for hooking on Bennett. We're going to the penalty kill. 119 left of the penalty kill. Marshand dekes through Boquist. Falls down after the deke. They call tripping. That's an awful call. Marshand fell. That's an awful call. We'll take it, though. 4v4 for 119 in the little power play. During the 4v4, this is why... These are the moments where you remember a team just has your number. Lorai whips the puck to Lindholm or around the boards. I'm not sure. But he tries to, with too much force, send it back the other way behind the net. It bounces off of Lindholm and, I believe, Lindell... They're battling. The puck bounces to Swayman, lands on top of his skate, and with a little bit of motion, just falls in the net. I mean, that's just a one in a million, man. Or one in a 10,000. Let's call it that. It's a lucky goal, but they all count the same. It's 1-1. One, one. It's a great bounce for them. It is one of my things that I hate about playing the Panthers the most. They make their own luck, but also, God, does it feel like they get these crazy bounces sometimes. Eh, I guess a lot of people can say that about the Bruins, too, considering our... our Friggin' walls are half built. 837 left. Greer goes full numbers on pasta. I mentioned this already. No call on it. That's an egregious no call. That's egregious. He went right through the back. Zaka, of all people, responds to him. And him and Greer get offsetting minors. People are pissed after that one. And 20 seconds later, McAvoy is blatantly cross checking for Hagee away from the play. We're going to the penalty kill. That's an obvious call. No one can be surprised by that. And no one can sit there and be like, oh, you'll call that one. They have to call that one. He's got the guy on the ice and he's just, yes, that's a penalty. We go to the penalty kill. Six seconds later, Florida won the face off. They dished the puck to Reinhardt in the left circle where he just absolutely snipes top blocker. It's 2-1 power play goal. 7-0-6 left. Pasta blatantly interferes with Reinhardt, hitting him away from the puck. Yes, Reinhardt acted like he got shot. Either way, that's a blatant interference. What was funny about this is Schmidt tries to take exception to it, but as soon as he gets to Pasta, Martian said, I'm so fucking done with this. Sheds him in midair. As he's jumping up to Superman punch Schmidt, turns into more of just a grapple hump kind of deal. That's fine. We let the boys be boys. 
And Schmidt's going to immediately turtle like crazy. I don't think he realized who was on top of him. Because after looking up, I feel like he went, Oh, I could have taken this guy. <laughs> Either way, Martin and Schmidt for roughing. Pasta goes for interference. We go to the penalty and we kill it. With 437 left, Mikula tugs on Pasta's jersey. People were calling this a whole, uh, makeup call. He literally yanked on the jersey in front of the ref. I mean, it, it slowed Pasta down. Is it a like soft call? Sure. It's you pulling the guy back right in front of the ref. That's not a makeup call. That's just a call. We're going to the power play, and it sucks. The power play sucks. 155 left. Zadorov for delay of game. There's your four in a row. I'm actually really curious how long this can go. We're going to kill off that at the end of the first. Second period starts. I never did puck drops. We'll do puck drops for the second period. Puck drops! 509 in. Fourth line goes to work again. Once again, get the, they get the puck in deep. Once again, they're retrieving pucks. Heavy forecheck. And it all comes together when Kostelik, behind the net, whips it to Kepke in the slot. And I'm going to pretend, because I'm allowed to do this, I'm going to pretend that Kepke intentionally redirected this to Carlo on the right side. And Carlo in that right circle, absolute sniper Rooney and cheats top blocker. And it's 2 2. And the vibes are coming back. You've had two goals from your fourth line. Top six has to do something eventually. We're winning this game. We're winning this game. And then 8 09 into the period. Greer for interference. We're going to the power play. During the power play, Patra is stripped of the wall. Reinhardt breaks a two on one. Reinhardt tries to feed Boquist. I don't know if it. Like, gets deflected, and then in on Swayman. It's a weird bounce. Comes back right in front of Swayman. Potter collides with Swayman as he's trying to catch up to Reinhardt. Just trips and... <laughs> Everyone's healthy. It's fine. Reinhardt does get to stand there and just smack the puck in for a shorthanded goal. It's 3-2. Our power play is actually embarrassing. It's, like, actually embarrassing. 7-1 left. Frederick plays the puck up the left wall to Geeky, who immediately turns it over. Immediately. Unfortunately... It gets smacked down that same wall, and Lorai and Peak had gone for the change, which they should have had ample time to do so, but because we turned it over immediately, it's a breakaway for Lundell, who beats Swayman from a little bit of distance, low blocker. Maybe five hole? I didn't see if it got under the legs or under the blocker. Either way, I was at work watching. I was doing my best. That's it. 4-2. That's your game-winning goal. Uh, that's just another mental mistake. I can't get on Geeky if I'm not going to get on Padre. 5.53 left. Thank God for Lorai. He needed this so badly. So, so, so badly. He gets some positivity going. Collects the puck from Kostelik at the left point. Makes a quick fake to go around his attacking defender. Skates into the left circle and beats Bobrovsky. Blocker side. It's 4-3. Third period. There's a couple penalty calls. We get really feisty in the last five. A lot of chances on net. Can't bury one. That's the game. That's the game. Look, I have nothing to talk about game notes now because I already already did this. Uh, brutal, man. I just... There's more talent on this team. And I don't like the way it's lined up right now. I, I don't know why we insist on... I don't know why we insist on Geeky the top six. I, I'll give the first line time to obviously gel. They look really bad so far, but they'll put it together, I hope. But that, that second line is just an absolute detriment they don't have a good shift it doesn't happen at five on five and that's concerning all that being said guys are four games in most of this video is me ranting and raving like a lunatic about stuff that i'm just trying to get off my chest we're gonna be fine we're gonna be fine the panthers have our number deal with it we all have to deal with it because the panthers have everyone's number <laughs> they just won the cup <laughs> you know what are you going to do about that? I feel good. I feel good about this team. I feel better now that you have thankfully allowed me to talk it out to you. I appreciate you guys so damn much. I don't think you guys realize how much I appreciate you. Uh, I look forward to people tearing my head off in the comments because they didn't listen to the whole video. Uh, but can I blame you? It's like 25 minutes long. Go bees. Go bees! Of course, we have to give a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting this channel, especially the high quality inspectors, our top line tier members, Chris and Erica, Jeff with a G, Tommy Braga, The Bug Man, Roland22, GD Viperworks, Len Cruz, Moonlighter TV, Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Coach D, The Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, 
Aaron Adams, Brett Arney, Pinsent, Adam Ella, and Nick Zatrulo. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. You're all studs and studettes. And of course, a huge thank you to the Stallions, our all-star tier members, Joel, Dutes42, Heil E. Coyote, Darren Woodbury, Abraxion, John Kirk, Michael DiPaolo, Wolf Warrior, Vinny, Adrian Winter, Tupton Ditashi, Nightmare Eco, Bruin Smash, DeKingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, and Jeremy. You are all absolute legends. I appreciate you eternally. And as usual, go bees!